गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन Hope you all are well in this pandemic situation. Once again, I am Ms. Sharma, Global Volunteer and Head of Campus Ambassador in IGB. Welcome to our international free webinar. Um, each, each, in each webinar, we meet with the new participants. So I have to say something about our IGB. IGB is an institution of global professional. We work with students, job seeker, job holder, and students also. Uh, to provide a holistic social work and education i am cordially welcoming you all today our 81 webinar topic on which are some statistics the easy way so important so it is very important for our audience we already completed 80 webinars successfully today our 81 webinar topic on uh, with two speaker dr namira munir and dr arnot dolazan alvaro so we already uh, so we have to be uh, give a warm welcome to our first speaker dr namira muni hello i am dr namira muni from pakistan i am phd in education i have 18 year of teaching and research experience and uh, i am author of 20 books which are taught at university level in bed md and phd and phil and phd classes Uh, and I have, I have published uh, uh, 12 research papers in different uh, ATC approved journals and I presented my research articles in 32 international and international conferences I am keynote speaker of uh, different uh, countries uh, at uh, in this world uh, I am editor and co-editor in two different journals thanks a lot Please give a warm welcome to our honorable speaker, Namira Muni. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Thank you. Now, it's this is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Namira Muni from Pakistan. My topic is qualitative and quantitative research. It's a very important and uh, very informative topic, and are you sure my screen is shown to you? Yes, ma'am. Qualitative and quantitative research is my topic. as uh, in uh, i'm educationist that's why i will link with uh, this topic with education the application of the scientific method to study educational problems and the goal is to explain predict and control educational phenomena is called research actually actually research uh, my teacher always says that research is not a uh, easy task research is actually is the same like a catching a black cat in a dark room it's not easy task to catch a black cat in a dark room at least we are not uh, like there and the cat's color is also a black but if you have expertise in this it's very uh, interesting very informative and very very uh, useful subject steps for conducting research are simple and common here selection of a problem is a first step problem mean statement of the problem on which you you want to conduct your research is a statement of the problem where you select your own interest problem use specific research procedure to design and collect data uh, for conducting research you have to select according to your topic your research design research designs are different two basic basic methods of research is qualitative and quantitative which are going to talk on this but designs are different if you are selecting qualitative research there are in this research there are many designs and if you are selecting quantitative research there is also a very different designs and you have to select a specific procedure of how you collect your data how you conduct your research how you uh, develop your instrument how you select your population what is your population and how you select your sample what is the sampling style these are all called is the research procedure and designs 
next step is analysis of data and when you collect your data you made your instrument you collect your data after that you have to uh, conclude your discussion this uh, information you collect from different people so that is uh, possible with analysis of data under the head of under the heading of the analysis of data and the analysis of uh, data uh, if you are conducting the qualitative research then the analysis of data is statistical in numbers in statistical formulas in statistical techniques but if you are conducting the qualitative research is uh, your uh, your data analysis in words in shapes uh, in uh, diagrams not in numbers in analysis in test statistical analysis statement of conclusions based on the results of the data analysis the data analysis is uh, actually you select your analysis uh, type how on which uh, type you analysis your data type of test you conduct on this with that test on your collective data is actually may based on your objectives you are not uh, randomly select a test for example i am conducting a qualitative research it's not possible that i conduct uh, any test i could do any test of a statistic for the statistical Actually, statistical analysis and selection of the test is depend on the selection of my uh, objectives. What I want to derive from this research is depend on my objectives. What I want to calculate from this, what I want to search in this, what I want to explore from this problem statement problem. Uh, on the basis of those uh, objectives, I select uh, uh, a made instrument. The research I conclude my uh, I select my population. I uh, I derive from population the sample and sample size, and from that I make a instrument research instrument. Uh, and then collect the data and then analysis of the test and then i make conclusions and results from analysis of the data two main thoughts the generated general categories of uh, methods currently being used in qualitative and quantitative which is our basic uh, topic for today's discussion qualitative research what is what is qualitative research a type of in which the research relies on the views on the participants. We get in qualitative research, we get views, views, opinions, ideas from what people. Second one, it is primarily explanatory research used to gain understanding, reasons, opinion, and motivation. Actually, qualitative means not quality. Common mistake we are all students always do that the qualitative mean quality is not the mean of quality qualitative research is mean that you find out uh, your uh, you conduct your research or you find out your results in words in figures in diagrams in views in opinion in sentences uh, you you find uh, you find out a uh, research problem and you go in the field with the different research data and gain information based on opinion based on motivation reasoning you find out the reasoning it provides insight into the problem to uncover trend in thought and opinion it's also uncovered many thoughts and opinions opinions under the idea insight many problems which are uncovered and not discovered yet we find out these problem solution under the umbrella of qualitative research Quantitative, second part is quantitative, a type of research in which the researcher did decide what to study. It is a process of quality. Quantifying. Quantifying will mean quantity. quantity. Quantitative mean quantity. Numbers. The problem by which of generating numerical data or data that can be transformed into usable statistics. Actually, quantitative research based on uh, opinion, no doubt. But in this research, we use numbers. Uh, we use numbers in collecting knowledge, information, information, and ideas, and all thoughts we collect from the people, from the students, from around the society. We collect information. In words, no doubt, we collect information in words, but we calculate in numbers. 
in qualitative research, we we not calculating any data. We just narrate their feelings, their ideas, their suggestions. But in quantitative data, we said, for example, I made a research instrument. I made an instrument as a research question. I collect data from hundred people. And uh, it's a uh, instrument uh, type for uh, Likert scale, four Likert scale, three Likert scale, or five Likert scale, or so on, whatever. That's given on the base on my problem. I I take example here. I take four or five Likert scale question, and uh, I get the information from hundred people. My sample size is hundred, and hundred people answers me on the same question. In the analysis of quantitative research, I said that the for first statement, 90 people say that. On so second statement, I said the 80 people said that. The next 60 people said that. In qualitative research, we are not uh, analysis like that in numbers. We just review the sample sizes small in qualitative research. In quantitative research, the sample size might be large. It is used to quantify attitude opinion, behaviors, and other defined variables, and generates results from large sample population. A large, huge population will select from population, a size of population is huge or large, and we select sample, but sample sizes must be large. There's no factor formula or rule to select a sample size, but uh, it's a simple thing that if your population is small, your sample size is bigger. And if your population size is big, your sample size is small. General purpose for collecting and analyzing data to explain, predict, or control phenomena or interest. Quantitative risk method, research method to select general purpose generally for that. We collect data, we analyze data, and predict results. In this, describe current conditions, investigate relationships, study cause and effects. We all, these three points we will discuss in detail on next slide. Assumptions of the researchers: We live in a stable, uniform, and coherent world. We can measure, understand, and generalize about our world generally regret as a positive perspective. These are the quantitative purpose assumptions and purpose of the qualitative research. Characteristics of qualitative research, number one is numerical data. Keep in your mind, quantitative mean numerical data and qualitative mean words, figures, and diagrams. Use a formally stated hypothesis and procedure is Stated in this, we state, we generate or we plan hypothesis, we propose hypothesis, and we procedure, we adopt a systematic process, it's a systematic scientific knowledge, scientific process, and we adopt a, a, according to research problem, we select a process. Use of control or minimize the effects of, of factors that could interfere with the outcomes of the research. And the large number of participant subjects, we already discussed that the sample size of participant subjects means here the same thing is that with different words, the sample size is participant subjects. So the sample size is large. And objective detect results, use pencil and paper, test question, questionnaire, etc. We use pencil and paper and we made a questionnaire. We collect data on our questionnaire. Questionnaire is based on a research topic or research problem. We select a research problem. We generate research uh, on the basis of a research problem. We study related literature and we make our research objectives on the basis of the research objectives to find out these research objectives. We select test analysis and we made a research instrument which uh, may be questionnaire interview or checklist etc and we when we collect data from a sample we analyze the result we analyze from the statistical and suitable statistical test 
uh, from the SVP with the help of SPSS. And then on the basis of the statistical analysis, we drive up the results, conclusions, findings, and recommendations in quantitative research. This is the method of quantitative research. Five basic designs are in quantitative research, descriptive, correlational, causal comparative, experimental, and sequence. These are the five common, and there are many methods or designs used in quantitative research, but these are the five common uh, designs which are used in descriptive research. Purpose to describe the current status of variable of interest to the researcher. Example, how many students drop out of the school? If the subject is, if you find, want to find out uh, uh, any problem, uh, and uh, you want to find out the reason of this problem, this is uh, came in the descriptive research design. Second example is what are the attitude of parents, students, and teachers concerning and extending school years. Uh, if uh, the school year is extended, what are the concerns about, you know, about that? Parents, students, and teachers, you want to find out this reason, this phenomena, or this problem, or this scenario, or this situation. Is fall in quantitative research design and quantitative in quantitative and descriptive research design. Third one example is that what kind of activities typically occurs in sixth grade art classes and how frequently does each occur? If you want to find out the endless activities in sixth grade arts classes and frequently and you want to make a schedule for that classes, then you conduct or you plan for descriptive research design. Second uh, design of quantitative research is correlational design to ascertain the extent to which two or more variables are statistically related. Correlation means find out the relationship between two variables. If you want to find out relationship with two or more, more than two variables, is called correlational research design in quantitative. What is the relationship between ACT scores and fisherman grades? If you want to find out the relationship between ACT scores and fisherman grades, then it's called correlation. And second one is a teacher's sense of efficacy related to his or her effectiveness. If you find out to the effectiveness of a teacher and efficacy of the sense of efficacy of a teacher, you find out the relationship in between both of these two things then it's called the quantitative research design in correlation. If you find out the significant relationship exists between the type of activities used in mathematics classroom and the student achievement, if you find out the relationship between activities, the relationship of activities conducted in classrooms and students' achievement is also called a correlation research in quantitative. Next uh, 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 design in quantitative is causal, causal comparative. Pause is based on pause. Pause, uh, you find out uh, cause why this occurs. This phenomena, this problem occurs by causal. You make in your mind if you select quantitative research and you find out the reasons, causes that is fall in causal comparative. Purpose to explore relationship among variables that cannot be achieved, manipulated, or controlled by the researcher. It's not manipulated, it's not controlled, it's uh, read or is observed, is studied, is uh, listed, and is uh, con just in actual situation. We are not manipulated in anything to find out or explore relationship among variables which are actually exist in 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 his life scenarios in examples uh, for the research topics or his research problem what is the effect of part-time employment on the achievement of high school students if a student is uh, uh, doing job as a part-time and he what, what is how is there is any effect on his educational achievement at higher school level is cause educational what is the effect if his uh, achievement is down and his academic scores is down, it means his part-time job is affected. And if his achievement is uh, high, then it means that uh, part-time employment is not affected on his study. We are not 
touch his job timing and his study time. We study in his actual scenario. He is going in part time job and he is studying regularly. Just we see the results. What is the effect on his actual situation? We are not manipulating anything. But statistic differentiates students who drop out from those who do not. If we want to study the reasons why the students drop, we take class in. We take, for example, we take ninth class, and we find out the reasons why the students drop and why not. We study both students who are dropped and who are not dropped, who pass out and who are not passed. We not uh, manipulate. We not disturb any timetable, any scenario, any condition, any environment. We study both students, uh, dropout students and pass-out students in their actual situation. Is causal comparative? We just find out cause and effect. If they fail, what is the cause behind that? If the high school student do not get uh, high scores, we find out the cause why he is not getting high scores. Is the part-time job is affecting on his uh, uh, educational achievement or something? And important characteristics is that the independent variables has already been manipulated. Independent variables, keep in your mind that there are two types of variables, dependent and independent. In causal comparative, always independent variable is manipulated, already manipulated, not we are manipulating that. And the next step is experimental. Purpose to establish cause and effect relationship we don't in last uh, causal comparative we just find the cause but in experimental we establish we find the cause and we find out effects also this is the difference between causal comparative and experimental we find the cause and its effects also we manipulate we take two groups we manipulate uh, one group environment and second group we don't manipulated and we see the effect of this manipulation or actual scenario. Examples are what is the effect of teaching with a cooperative group, strategy or a traditional lecture approach on students' achievement. Well, how we conduct experimental research? Actually, uh, maximum size uh, of uh, this uh, research is uh, 30. We take 30 students in a classroom and uh, for uh, 60, six weeks, we observe 30 students. We are taking 60 students in the classroom and we conduct a pre test. And on the basis of equal distribution of the test results, we make two sections of one class 30 students in one class and 30 students in second class. Same class, we distribute in two sections. In one section, we teach with cooperative learning and second with traditional lectures. And after uh, three weeks or six weeks time, we again take a test. And we see the educational achievement and test results. If the cooperative group's strategy take group takes higher scores, is mean cooperative group, group strategies is effect, more effective are more useful teaching method and if traditional methods take class take the like textbook scores or high, show high achievement in classes that is mean that a traditional method is good as compared to cooperative teaching method this is called the experiment we conduct experiment we take two different strategies two different teaching methodologies and we we see the effects of these two strategies with pre-test and post-test on that. What is the effect of teaching with manipulative versus traditional? A logarithm approach on students' test scores, same. We teach one group with manipulative and one group from traditional, and we see the results and see the differences in which class students achieve more scores, pay good uh, results, and uh, 
take interest is mean that teaching approaches more useful. The important characteristics are that the researcher manipulate the independent variable and control exchanges variable. In this, we manipulate a one class, whole class, 30 students, we manipulate whole environment, whole teaching strategy, timetable, each and everything is are under control. We manipulate this. And one class of 30 students, we we take as it is as normal environment and then we compare and we find out the cause and effects actually this is called the experiment single subject and quantitative research design the single subject or the name of the purpose is to investigate cause and effect relationship with sample of one one case we find out the relationship and cause explore only one person is case study called what is the effect of behavior modification program Jones conducted class. Jones, we study only Jones behavior. One person behavior to study. What is the effect of behavior training program on Jones' ability to complete her The important characteristics is the use of specific intervention to cause behavioral change in low incidence population special education. We just, uh, this is conducted on special education areas. Actually, this is a, a special child are uh, need more attention or this is the full case. This is the full object. We, we take only one person and we study only one angle of this person or one behavior or one study, one thing on this person is called single subject quantitative design. Now we came on quantitative method, general purpose, why we are conducting the purpose of conducting qualitative research, the probe deeply into the research, so tend to opt in depth understanding about the way things are, why they are like that, and how participants perceive them. We need to create a sustained in depth in context study that allows the researcher to convert suitable, less convert person understanding. Actually, general purpose to conduct qualitative research to find out uh, uh, the opinion of a huge population and large number of samples. And assumptions of the research is all meaningful so, so, situated in a particular per per perspective, context, different people and groups often have different perspectives and context. So there are many different meanings in that word. Researchers, we select only then qualitative research when we find out uh, results from a large sample, large sample or large population. Quantitative characteristics, what are the characteristics of the qualitative research? There are many characteristics, but I, I selected the few or four few common and few important characteristics. There are no hypothesis guidelines. The researcher that the journal issue is known as the pressure shoulder problem suggesting the journal issues of concern. There are few participants involved in the study. Data analysis is interpretive in nature. The researcher interact extensively with the participants. Qualitative research we go in the field and we we, we or we send uh, today actually we, internet uh, time period and the world is closed and at the global village and we, we, we don't want to look any further just go there and select the, and collect the opinion of the people we just use internet and we use mail we send the, our questionnaire or research instrument to the people and get information by for, through different platforms google forms uh, facebook pages and different other forms we collect from the whole world's data it's not that Number, it's a number game. We get the data from a huge population. It's the characteristics of a qualitative basic design, the narrative, and qualitative research. Now we are qualitative. Okay. Qualitative research, well, there are the two main with the designs of the narrative and ethnography. What is the narrative? Narrative actually focus, focus on studying a single person and gathering data through the collection of stories that are used to construct a narrative about the individual's experiences and the meaning he or she attributed to them. 
if we want we uh, would study one person if we study indira gandhi's life is narrative quality qualitative research we we study kaidi azam's life is narrative design if we study as uh, hiruddin babar's life we study uh, uh, john dee's life is narrative design and we select only one single person that are getting information about that person each and everything who study about that and we collect information about that about uh, regarding the, uh, that person and uh, according to our research problem what we want to find out uh, if we want to find out his uh, political uh, involvement or educational involvement or personal involvement what are study statement of the problem set regarding that we select the problem and we set that information about that the only one person that is called in the region research design in quality what are the experiences of a intern teachers who have been moved into administrative position in her school if a teacher move to high position what is the changes occur in his if we study the same person uh, if uh, he is working as low grade and his grade is up grade what is changes came in his if we study that is the research so design in quality but is important means in a special need child who is placed in a regular education classroom and to if, if a student to take one student which are teaching uh, studying in an equivalent environment we we find out the changes in his person we call narrative research design in quality Second uh, design of qualitative research is ethnography. Ethnography is the main, is a uh, name shows his uh, attributes and his uh, meaning. Purpose to obtain an understanding of the shared beliefs and practices of a particular group or culture. If we want uh, uh, to study a culture or a particular group. Uh, habits, uh, festival norms, cultures is called the ethnographic study in a qualitative research. What is the nature of the problem teacher encounter when they being used a constructive approach to instruction after having taught using a very traditional approach for ten years? And second topic is that why does a sense of failure permits everything about this particular high school is both of these type of study is called ethnography studies in qualitative research design now we discuss difference between qualitative and quantitative before that we just said no about what is qualitative research and what is quantitative research uh, their designs are in uh, how many common designs or important designs or uh, uh, some some designs from qualitative research design and quantitative research design. now we have we study what to learn about what is the difference between qualitative and quantitative research the purpose of quantitative is to understand and interpret social interaction qualitative research the purpose of the conducting of this research to find out or to understand social interaction in quantitative research to test hypothesis to look cause and effect relationship and to make predictions is the purpose this is a this is the difference in purpose we in qualitative we for interpretation social interaction and in quantitative we predict relationship we find out relationship and we find out cause and effects and we generate hypothesis and we test that out. next is group studies in qualitative research smaller we study small group and we don't select randomly in quantitative we randomly select to the large group this is the difference in qualitative and quantitative we in qualitative research we study and we uh, we select a small number of people and we get information from that in quantitative we randomly selected a large number of groups and we find we get information and calculate 
Partizas. Periodos. In qual in qual periodos? Studying of all phenomena, not periodos. We don't take any variable in qualitative research. We study all phenomena. In quantitative research, specific variables are studied. We find out specific rule or we drive or we uh, mention specific variables in our study and we study only that variables in our study. Type of data. In qualitative research, data in shapes of words, images and objects. Other, on the other hand, in quantitative we get data specific numbers and statistics we apply statistical analysis and we apply the statistical test and in, in qualitative research when we find out that how to interpret interpret data in words images objects or shapes or diagrams or graphs but if we find out data in qualitative and collect data in quantitative research we specific we specify the numbers or we from whom we get uh, data numbers, we mention the numbers, and we on that numbers uh, on the basis of the objectives and instrumented data information, we apply a statistical test on that. Forms of data in quantitative. We get open and responses in general. And uh, we just uh, plan a question, questionnaire in qualitative data, but the responses are open to response back questions. We don't just take the uh, sample or our participants of research that they are going to answer in two words, three words, or one word story. They are open, they give their own words, own opinion as they want. We interview, but they are not structured interviews and participant observations. If if we want a, a participant observation, mean you know, if we want to study a festival or a culture of a specific uh, school of thought people or special community of a people, we go there and we make ourselves a part of that festival that community and that, that uh, environment and we observe, we do all each and everything which are doing that, that uh, those people, we do all things and we uh, behave like that and we observe as a participant. Field node, we collect that as a field node, field node we, we go in a field. If we want to study in qualitative research, we study culture and uh, ethnographic and uh, narrative we said the types of research we already discussed that if you will go if we are conducting a ethnographic research we study, want to study a culture of any society we just go there as any community we go there that community and we get field moves in the shapes of pictures in shapes of uh, uh, audio recording video recording and uh, note down with the pen of uh, with the short notes and reflections we collect reflections from this as we collect data in a qualitative research in that shapes. Shapes are open ended responses, interviews, participant observation, TV notes, and reflections. These are the types of data which are collected under the umbrella of qualitative research. And under the umbrella of quantitative research, we Crisis measurements using structured and validated data collection instruments. We design our research instrument with most of the questions are closed and then we restrict the responses to answer in one word or we give them option agree, strongly agree, disagree, neutral, etc. They are bound to answer on these options only. And we collect the information that and then we analysis for the that data. Now come from uh, come to the data analysis. Two types of research, qualitative and qualitative research. We analyze our data, identify patterns, features, and themes. We create themes, we make features, we uh, we uh, make objects, we make uh, uh, graphs or we make shapes. Uh, and we make sentences 
we are for analysis are data in words in sentences in paragraphs in qualitative data we select appropriate statistical test we apply that test on our selected data and then we analyze our data and find out the results this is by different in quality and quantity the role of researcher what is the role of researcher in quality research researcher biases may be known to the participants of the study and participants characteristics may be known to the researcher because qualitative research has uh, uh, no restricted response maybe you, you collect feel most maybe you are biased maybe you you just say uh, every human being will see his own lenses if i wear this uh, glasses i see him under this glass only same that i think under uh, same what is running in my mind as qualitative researcher because uh, selected notes on uh, on his or her notebook he may be biased or collect uh, say uh, her his or her interest notes maybe it's not compulsory that each and every researcher is biased but maybe uh, quantitative researchers and their biases are not known to participants to the study and participant characteristics to deliberately hidden from the researchers actually in quantitative research you send your questionnaire and they give your responses and responses are fixed answers are fixed uh, just just like mc2 spaces if these are right these are wrong these are clear first point these are at the second point this is in quantitative research in qualitative research researcher may be biased in quantitative research, there is less uh, biasness, uh, less chances of a biasness or very low chances of a biasness. And objectivity, if we, we discuss about objectivity of qualitative and quantitative research, qualitative research is subjectivity is expected. Actually, subjective means relative, long, qualitative is subjectivity is expected. You narrate your results in one one paragraph two paragraph or three paragraphs in qualitative objectivity is critical you answer your question as you answer your uh, uh, results and objective questions one line one word one figure or qualitative research is subjectivity and subjective base and quantitative is objective results we all we play all games of research of, for for results. We want to find out the results. We uh, we select a problem. We make a research objectives. We study related literature. We design. We select research design. We select population. In, in population, we select sample size, and that we make a uh, research instrument. And research instrument we, we select we, we get information from that research instrument and generate um, the data and and then then we find that analysis then getting data we get analysis on that and we find out the results for for all this system is we really only want to find out the results and we find out the objective are we are uh, find out the, what, what objectives we design are we able to find out or uh, achieve our objectives or not this is the results we actually and at the last we see in the first we design that objective are we in, when we find out the results we find out are we able to find out the, uh, or we achieve our objectives or we are not able to achieve our in qualitative particular or specifies finding that are less generalized. A dilemma of a qualitative research is that the results is not generalized because we study only one culture, we study only one person, we study we study smaller size of the 
in quantitative why people like uh, most of the people like quantitative result, research is that one of the common reasons is that these results are generalized this finding the generalized when you select a population from two to four or five districts from uh, uh, from a province and this is uh, on 36 uh, for example one program. Uh, if, if in one province there are 30 districts and I study only seven or eight districts, if I conduct quantitative research, I am able to generalize my just on the whole province. We suppose that which is scenario is in these nine or ten districts, we suppose that all the rest of the districts are the under the existing under the same scenario. But in qualitative research, actually we are studying small size of the sample, that's why the sample is not generalized. This is the difference in qualitative and quantitative results. Now we discuss specific methods, the method of qualitative research and the method of quantitative. Quantitative, qualitative research exploratory or bottom up the research generates a new hypothesis and theory from that. And in quantitative, confirmatory or top down, the researcher tests the hypothesis or theory with that. In qualitative, we are going to the assumptions and we are not, assumptions are not tested. We just assume that maybe perhaps this is a phenomena, perhaps this is a thinking, perhaps this is a cultural effect of this. In quantitative, so we confirm that results, we, we generate a hypothesis and we test that hypothesis and the results find out we are confirmed, confirmed on about that this is the specific data we get is that. What is the views of human behavior towards qualitative and quantitative? Uh, people around the world think about qualitative research as dynamic, situational, social and personal, and quantitative, regular and predictable. Research objectives. Research objective is most important thing in our research. Qualitative research or quantitative research, we may, we, first of all, we select research problem. After that, we study related literature and we uh, design our research objectives. And on the basis of research objectives, we conduct each and every step of our research. Objective is a most important thing in our study or in our research. In quantitative research, in qualitative research, explore, discover, and construct. In quantitative, describe, explain, and predict. Simple is that. Focus. In qualitative research, focus is wide angle, length, examine breadth and depth of the phenomena. And in quantitative, narrow angle length, test and specific hypothesis. If we want to study a one single culture, obviously we have a narrow angle. And if we have uh, 2,000 people to test, uh, to get uh, information, it's not possible to study 2,000 people, any single test, any single man in depth knowledge. In qualitative research, actually, we, we may study anything. At, at, a single man or a single institute, a single organization is possible in quantitative research. That's why it's and the lens is wide and examine breadth and depth phenomena. In quantitative, we get uh, information from a large population, a huge population. That's why we don't test, uh, we get uh, in depth knowledge. Nature of observation in qualitative research studies behavior in natural environment. As we discussed before, I think sufficient enough we study behavior in natural environment as uh, if we are studying uh, in uh, qualitative research of culture, then we study as natural environment. If we want 
to explore a uh, man one single study single man person study then we study in depth study in national environment that man that institute or that organization in quantitative studies behavior is control conditions isolated cause causal effects we are study behavior under control conditions we condition we, we control many conditions and in isolation conditions we observe what is the nature of reality in both types of this? Multiple realistic subjective uh, are in this qualitative research and in quantitative single reality and objectivity. Say qualitative is subjective and quantitative is objective, same as in our study students' life. Subjective questions are objective questions, subjective questions are narrative, detailed, everything, and objective questions is short and comprehensive and brief and crux of the story. Finally, in qualitative narrative reports with extractual descriptions and direct questions from research participants, and in quantitative statistical reports with correlation, comprehension, or means and statistical significance of the findings. In narrative reports, we, we, we go there in the field and we probably move down the, uh, our field note or we record video, we record audio and collect data. And after that, we make notes and we narrate our results in words, figures, and diagrams. In quantitative research, we get information from the people and then statistical analysis and then uh, analysis of the data and then find out the results and statistical, and statistical significance of the findings we find that reports. You are selecting, well, you are conducting or selecting problem, research problem, qualitative or quantitative. Yes. Both researches are equally good, equally important, and have equally this space. But, but they keep on your mind these are the two different types. But the write up and the uh, dissertation or thesis research projects, these are the main common steps to write or to conduct us. First of all, we have a research program. I said that uh, if you think that research uh, is an uh, elephant, whole research project is an elephant, and the selection of a research, if, in my own words, not anyone else said that, in my own words, for the ease of the students' understanding, I, I think that, that if uh, uh, we if we think that the research for writing of a research project is a full elephant, selection of a research problem is a no loss that elephant. You understand that the how big the nose of an elephant? Length, his width, his length is fatty and etc. thing. Nose is not smaller of the elephant nose, not my nose, not your nose. Nose of the elephant is how big is this? This is the main thing. It's a more, more complicated thing and most difficult thing and most attention seeking thing is the selection of a research problem. Actually, all projects they depend on selection of a research problem. What you want to find, what you want to study, what you want to explore is the most important thing. Your whole study depends on this. And keep in your mind that research is a scientific process. Scientific process is a taxonomy, is a series, is a steps. We have sequence of our research. Actually, here I want to explain the sequence of our research. In which sequence 
you are conducting your research, either you are selecting qualitative research or quantitative research. Actually, actually I have a class and I want to know the time for the class. We select a problem, either qualitative or quantitative. Before selecting a person, we have to study the view of related literature. We study the literature, we study surroundings, we study culture, we study our scenario, our society, and then we find the research problem at your own interest. And at your own, you select your research problem. And when you select your research problem, then you identification of research problem, topic of research, title. Then you convert that research problem in topic of research or title of research. And you identify the research problem, convert it, and you, you find out any, if you find that, if you are a student, for example, you are a student and you study in a uh, tech class. And uh, many students are drop off, and you find that is a problem. Or many students came late, and due to he came late, he missed his or her first period. That's why he dropped in first lecture and first uh, lecture. What which subject? Whatever subject. This is the problem. You find why they are fake. If you find the cause and you said first of all you find the problem that many students are drop out and many students are fail it's the problem then you identify the research problem you convert this problem in your topic of research or title of research find out or study the cause the failure or drop off of the students at a high secondary level high for example, I identify the problem, top of the research. Then, second step is yes, introduction, background. When we select research problem, we have to introduce, not introduction of myself, it's the introduction of your selected problem of the research, which topic you select. It's the sequence that you study about that, research problem. This problem is not only yours problem. It's a global village. The whole world is a global village. And the whole world have in the world many people have the same problem. You just rectify that people who have same problem which you have. It's only find out other when we study the related literature. Related literature means related to your topic. You study the literature related to your topic. When you study the literature related to your problem, your problem is open to you. In your mind, many videos are open regarding your problem. There are many reasons behind that came late in college or university or school. If you study before conducting research, it's equally good. If you study books, it's your data. And you study the literature related to your problem, whatever is articles, journals, theses, whatever, in books, whatever you find, you study that related to your problem. And background of the study and find the makeup and keynote or the outline or about regarding your research problem and write down the introduction of the, your post, uh, statement of the problem, topic of the research, or title of the research. That why you study this, why you select this topic, what is your topic, reason behind that topic, and what is the problem of, uh, of the problem occurs in your mind and you select this problem and this problem is not your act, only for your problem. You, Rectify that. And then objectives of the study. You have to design the objectives of the study one, two, three, four, five. What you want in objectives of the study, you 
have to write down what you want to find out from this study, what you want to explore, what you want to enlist, what you want to compare. You have to write you know, in statements, write statements, write statements, write keep it. Keep in your mind that in one object is only one thing you have to do. And the such hypothesis or a such person, Hello. you have to do. Hello? 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 No, uh, 60 minutes is over. Time is over. Time is over. <laughs> no, ma'am, time is not over. But the, uh, it's okay. uh, already 60 minutes over. I don't think so. I can't understand. Ma'am, uh, you have 45 minutes. Already 60 minutes is going, going on. Oh. Do you have another? I just, I just, okay. Okay. Ma'am, I finish it. Okay. 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 Okay
So, Quran Bakalpa is a measure of internal consistency that is how closely related a set of items are as a group. Uh, it is considered to be a measure of scale reliability. So, Quran Bakalpa can be written as a function of the number of test items and the average intercorrelation among the items. So, this Quran Bakalpa was used in reliability, test, reliability testing of different instrument that we use in thesis writing and um, dissertations. So this is the formula for Cronbach uh, Alpha. We have K over K minus 1 multiplied to the quantity 1 minus summation of uh, sum of the variances and a to a variance of the total, total scores. So uh, let's try this. So we have we have this. Uh, we have the interpretation for Cronbach Alpha. So we have, if you have 0 0.9, more than 0 0.9, that is ex excellent. And 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, we have good. And 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, acceptable. And we have 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, questionable. And 0 0.5, 0 0.6, poor. And 0 0.5, less than 0 0.5, that is unacceptable. So in university, if we, if we have less than 0 0.7, so you need to... Um, change or you need to revise your instrument. Okay, so instrument is the survey questionnaire or um, any instrument that you will use in your thesis or dissertation. So first, I will teach about how to use the Kronbach Alpha. So if you have laptop in your side of your using laptop, you can uh, just uh, follow what 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 I am doing. Okay. So first, we have this example. We have this data. So uh, le uh, I'll I'll go first with the, if you don't have the uh, the data analysis. So later on. Okay. So this is the current back alpha. So later on, we have the data analysis, and I will teach you how to install or how to put data analysis in your Excel. So first, we have the current back alpha. For example, you have this data. So as you can see, you have this uh, responses. Example, you have, if you have four, that is strongly agree. If you have three, example, you have uh, agree. And number two, you have um, moderately agree. And then if you have one, disagree, okay, for example. So I have this data and then I have to make, I have to do the Cronbach Alpha. So first thing to do is to, to find the variance of each column. So you have to put equal, and then you have to put bar, bar that, and then you have to put this, just follow what I'm doing. And then you have to highlight this from one to 20 and then just press enter. So that is the variance, so bar minus P. And then you have to drag this from this to this one so that you have um, the variances, okay, from column one to column 10. So that is your item variances. So this one, again, this is the item. Item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. As you can see in this, uh, in this Excel, okay, so you can see that there is, there are, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 20 respondents. So this is the standard respondents. If you are using what we call the ground back alpha, again, you're using, you should use 20 um, respondents. So we're done with the variances of the items. Now, now, now we go to the total of each, uh, the total scores or the total responses of each respondent. So we have to put equal and then sum from starting from item one to item 10. Then you have to put that and then drag again. And then that's it. And then next, we have to find the variance again of this one. So the same. 
that is 7.39. So next we have to put this. So to find the number of items in Excel, you have we have this. You can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but there is a formula for that to, to, to have that you have equal um, count A and then uh, drag again. And then you have that. You have 10 items for that. For this one. And then we have the sum of the variances. Then uh, the, again, you have equal. And then you have to drag this one. So, oh, sorry, sum. And then highlight this one. And then enter. And then next, equal. You have the variance of the total scores. You have to find bar P. So bar that P. And then this one. And then the same. As you can see, 7.39 here is the same as 7.39 here. So they are the same. So now we have to find what is the crown back alpha. Okay. So now we, this is the formula. So you have equal. So we have the, the number of items. So you have to uh, copy this. Okay. And then put open parenthesis first. And then you have how to divide this by the same number of items, then minus one, and then this one, and then this one. And then you have to multiply this from the formula from here, as you can see from the formula here. Uh, this one, you will use that. Then, sorry, sorry. And then multiply. So you have asterisk, and then another. We have one. So one minus you have r. So you have the sum of the item variances, and then divided by. The variance of the total score, and then close, and then enter. Okay, so as you can see, there the uh, the Kronbach alpha now is 0.797624. So that is your Kronbach alpha. If you want to find the remarks here, so the remarks is so 0 0.6. Uh, sorry, 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, that is acceptable. So we will write this acceptable. Okay. So since I, I'm pre uh, I have prepared this one, so this one, uh, this is the uh, self-made Kronbach Alpha. So the same formula, I use the same formula and I also use the remarks or interpretation so that uh, if you have answers from uh, from your respondents, you just copy the responses from example, from another sheet to this sheet so you can find your Kronbach Alpha. So, so some of you will wonder how, um, if you can use this, if we have only five items, yes, you can use that example. But you have to do a change, again. so you have you can do that. But you have to change again the formula for this one because, uh, as you can see, you have to add all the variances. So that's that is the Kronbach Alpha. So after that, as you can see in this uh, in this one. Okay, so you have the Kronbach Alpha, you have 0 0.921, and the remarks or interpretation is excellent. If you have this one, so this is acceptable, as this, the same as this one. So 0 0.79 is also acceptable. So when you say acceptable, you can, pers uh, you can uh, proceed to plotting of questionnaires. Okay, so next we have this. So we have the data analysis. Okay. So data analysis. So data analysis is defined as a process of cleaning. We have the transforming and modeling data to discover useful information for decision making. So the purpose of data analysis is to extract useful information 
from data and taking the decision based upon the data analysis. So we are we are using this data analysis just to make or just to prove uh, our hypothesis and hypothesis. So how to start the data analysis? For example, you don't have the data analysis in your Excel. Okay. So just skip this one. Then so first thing, third thing here, you have to click the file. So if, for example, here you don't have this. Uh, I just open another one. For example. Okay, for example, I don't have anything here. Uh, I have to, yeah, I have to, we have to go to the file. Click the file and then go to options. And then find add-ins. And then um, you have to, it's not, uh, resp not responding. So just let's just read. And then uh, if you can see this, there, there is manage, ma manage Excel add-ins. So you just click go. And then check analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack BVA. So just press OK. So as you can see, there is a data analysis here. This is the data analysis we're in. We will use this later. So again, if you want data analysis from home, find data, and then data analysis. So that is the data analysis. So let's proceed. So again, so to start, how to start data analysis. So you have to... Again, so just a re quick review. So you have to click the file, click file, click options. You, know, you have to click add ins. You have to look for manage Excel and click go. And check analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack BBA and click OK. So click data. So find data analysis at the upper right of your screen. And we have there's an instance that uh, if, if it's not working, so you can start your Excel and reopen it. But still, if it's still not working, uh, you need to restart your computer. So that's uh, that's the, uh, the thing that we should remember. So sometimes data analysis couldn't uh, add in your Excel um, easily. So next we have, okay, so... I will, I'll just pick uh, some important um, parts of the data analysis. I will use the T-test, the an ANOVA, or analysis of variance, and what we call the correlation. Okay, so first we have the T-test. So a T-test is a statistical test that is used to compare the means of two groups. So that it's often used in hypothesis testing to determine whether a process or treatment actually has an effect on the population of interest or whether two groups are different from one another. So we are trying to find the differences of the, the, the two groups. Okay. Again, t-test is used if you have two groups. Two groups. My laptop was. Uh, okay, so we have again, so we have one tail. So we have one tail t test. So that is closed ended or one direction. When you say one direction, so you could find if it is um, expiring sample. So do boys spend more time each week in poor each activities than girls? If you can see, there is a clue word or. Um, that is the more time, when you say more time, it would, uh, they have, again, more more time than girls. Example, more time, uh, the boys spend more time than girls. As you can see, um, there is a close ended, one direction that is more. Okay. Next, we have two tailed, or what we call open ended. When you say open ended, it would require in, um, 
the normal distribution t- the normal distribution table that is um from the right side to the left side so anything from the right side to the left side those are the, what we call uh, acceptable region in uh to think test so again for example is there a significant difference from the between girls and boys in the number of hours spent in for each activities each week as you can see if you have two tail there is a significant difference if we have one tail there is more that is the clue word again that is more and again um significant difference so if again if we have one tail we have one direction or we, we can have we can see increase more okay. and if you have two tail you can find significant difference or significant relationship if we are using uh, person R and experiment R. Okay, so we have the, for, the, the first kind of t-test in data analysis is we have the paired two sample for means. So the test, the t-test paired two sample for means tool performs a paired two sample students t-test to ascertain if the null hypothesis means of two populations are equal. So it can be accepted or rejected. This test does not assume that the variances of both populations are equal. So parity tests are typically used to test the means of population before and after the treatment. So two samples of math scores from students before and after a lesson. That is an example of uh, two sample per means. Again, two samples of math score from students before and after a lesson. So again, this, this is an example. So to the spared sample. So for example, you have this, uh, you have this data. So uh, from pre-test, or we have this course, 80, 89, 88, 87, 95, and so on and so forth. And for this one post-test example, you have 95, 95, 90, 97, 94. So again, uh, we, could, we can choose two uh, hypotheses there. You can find uh, is there a significant increase, okay, or the score of the post test is higher than the pre test that is your one tail test. But if you use two tail tests, you can use if there if there is a, if there there is there a significant difference between the scores uh, the the score of pre test and post test. Okay, that is again one tailed and two tailed. So. Next, we're, we're going to use the data analysis. So as you can see from here, from the top um, part of your screen, so you have the data, and then you'll find the data analysis. So click data analysis, and you, you will uh, uh, try, we'll try to find the t-test to sample means. Okay, so this one, just click that, and then click OK. So as you can see, there is uh, what, what we call the variable or range. So we have to drag this from uh, variable one. So if you want this example, you want to change, uh, just repeat this. Example, this is a post-test, a uh, pre-test, sorry. Pre-test. And this one is the post-test. Okay. So again, I'll go to data analysis and data analysis. Here. Then test, t-test period to sample per means. And then we have the variable one range, just drag this one. And then for variable two range, I'll drag this one to, from post test to the, so you have 30 items, 30 responses or 30 students in the class. And then you have to check check the label. If, as you can see, I uh, I, inc I included the pre uh, the label here. The we have the pre test and post test. Okay, so you just check the label. If we, we didn't use the uh, pre test and post test there, or if we didn't include that, you can uh, you you'll, you know, you don't need to check the labels. So next we have output range here. Then uh, find another another uh, space for the uh, for the screen or for the Excel. 
and then just click OK. Uh, what's the problem? Just override with. Ah, uh, there, there is a data here, so I'll just. So there is uh, an answer here. So I'll just uh, delete this one first. Okay, so I'll go back to data, data analysis, data sample per means, okay. And then, uh, okay, so th that's it. As you can see here, um, we have the, the data itself, or the result. Okay, so why do we need this data analysis? So, so some of you are not, um, even if you are not good in mathematics, if you will have to, if you uh, learn this one, you'll need, you don't need to um, ask the help of statisticians. So as you can see, so statisticians, uh, um, statisticians P is very, um, what do you call it, expensive. So if you have to learn this one, so uh, you can save money for your thesis and dissertation. Okay. Or for your action research, for teachers, we need to do action research and apply the research. So we can save money by using this one, the data analysis tool. So as you can see here, for example, you have the t-stat. So this is the uh, t-stat, this is the our uh, T value, okay, if you can remember the uh, statistics class. So that is T stat is the T value. And we have this one, we have the P value for one tail. We have the T critical for one tail. We have the P value for two tails. And we have this T critical for two tail. So for example, uh, our problem here is we'll try to find if there is a significant increase in uh, in the scores from pre-test to post-test. As you can see here, there is a negative sign here. This is um, this negative sign is what they call um, uh, absolute value, meaning the negative. Uh, you, you can um, uh, it's either you can use this one. You can use this one, 6.7, okay, uh, uh, regardless of negative sign. Okay, for example, 6.7 is greater than, so since we are using increase, so that is one tail, so 6.7 is greater than 1.699. So we have to, so again, we have to reject, or, uh, sorry, we have to accept, sorry, let's accept the, uh, sorry, what is that? So for this one, we have to accept the hypothesis. So that is, it increases. So, so as you can see this one. For, for this one, um, for if you have, there is there a significant difference between the pre-test and the post-test? Uh, we have to use two tail. As you can see, 6.7 is greater than 2.04. Therefore, we have to, uh, since it is greater than, we have to reject the hypothesis wherein, uh, as you can see from the one tilde, that is, it increased. So therefore, we have to reject our hypothesis wherein there is a significant, uh, there is no significant difference. So therefore, uh, this one, uh, the uh, post, post test again, post test is, um, the scores in post test is greater than the pre test. So that is the use of the t test paired sample means. So next we have the t test to sample assuming equal variances. So a two sample t test assuming equal variances is used to test data if there is a statistical significance or if the results may have occurred randomly. So this procedure provides sample size and power calculations for one or two sided. So you have two sample t tests when the variances of the two groups 
are assumed to be equal. So uh, the assumed difference between means can be specified by entering the means for the two groups and letting the software calculate the difference or by entering the difference directly. So example of this, uh, so we have the product alpha again. So we have this one, so check. This is equal variance. So same thing to do, we have to go to data. So these are our scores and then data analysis. And we'll try to find the equal variance and then press again, okay. So drag this one from here to here. And then this one from here to here. And then uh, output range, just check this one. And then, okay. And then as you can see here, again, it's 3.5. So again, uh, if we are using the two-tailed test, so 3.5 is greater than 2.0, okay, that is, again, we have to reject. So there is a significant difference between the scores of the two groups. Okay, so that is the equal variances. Okay, so next we have to go to uh, assuming an equal variances. So in a statistics, so uh, in um, in a statistics, we can use the equal variances. The uh, this, uh, this, uh, the answer for equal and unequal variances are almost the same. So let's try to find this one. So again, two sample assuming unequal variances. So this tool executes a two sample student's t test on a data sets from two independent population with an equal variances. So this test can be either two-tailed or one-tailed contingent upon if we are testing that the two population means are different or if one is greater than the other. So try the Quran back alpha. Okay, so this one, as you can see here, so I'll just rebuild this one uh, and hide. So almost the same. So almost the same answer. So T critical here and T critical here are the same. So you can use either the unequal or equal variances in, uh, in data analysis. So let's go to single factor and one-way ANOVA. So a one-way ANOVA is a type of statistical test that compares the variance in the group means within a sample whilst considering only one independent variable or factor. It is a hypothesis-based test, meaning that it aims to evaluate multiple mutually exclusive theories about our data. So that is a single factor one-way ANOVA. So we have two kinds of ANOVA. We have the one-way and the two-way. So the difference between that, one way is you have one independent variable and two way you have two bar two or more variables. So let's go. So I have here a one of uh, one of the result from uh, the masters uh, master uh, mas master master thesis that I do did. So this one, for example or one way ANOVA. So his, she'll try to find if there is a significant difference between each of, um, each of, uh, each of the students. So the responses of the students, so will try to find if age directly affect or directly affect the, uh, the responses of the student. So, if you can see here, so how, how can we do that? So for example, you have this one. So you just erase this one. So let's try. So you have to, you uh, again, use data, and then data analysis here, and then try to find two ANOVA single factor, and then press OK. And then input range, you have drag from this one until this one. Okay. So 
So you have uh, she had twenty three hundred fifty four respondents. So that's why it's very uh, it's too many respondents. So you have this output range. You have to click here and then go here and then press OK. So as you can see, um. In an ANOVA, a single factor summary, you have column one, that is 38. So as you can see, the, uh, the sum, let, let's try. So sum of that is okay, 354. So the respondents for this problem is 354. So, so that's it. So for column one, we're in the age, for example, you have uh, uh, example 11 to 15. So yeah, that is column one. In column two, example is 16 to 20. And column three, uh, 21 to 25. So that is uh, 354. And actually, as you can see there, there is an average. So 3.11, the, the responses are 3.11, 3.37, 3.15. And for uh, the ANOVA, for analysis of variance, as you can see here, uh, 2.57 is less than the critical value of 3.02. And 0 0.07 is uh, greater than the value of 0 0.05 as our p-value. Okay, so therefore we have to accept this our hypothesis wherein there is a significant and uh, there is okay, there is no significant difference between uh, sorry there is no significant difference between the developmental challenges. Um, encountered by the students in terms of each. So from the same as this one, you have the sex. So you have, if you can see there is male and female. Um, as you can see, we can use status here, but if you use this in only one table, it's, uh, the best thing to do is to use ANOVA. Okay, so again, so, some of you will wonder Again, uh, ANOVA will, can only use for two samples, but why did you use the, uh, sorry, ANOVA can use only for three or more samples. Why did you use two samples for here? This is T-test. So again, my answer for that is that if you use uh, T-test there, so you can, you will use another table. So since we have to uh, use only one table for, for this problem, so we're gonna use, ANOVA. So the same thing that we should we should do. So example, just erase this one. So well, let's go to data and then data analysis. Same thing to do. Try uh, find as uh, ANOVA single factor and then try try uh, click OK and then uh, select select the input and then so from this one to this one. And then again, input range, change the input range since we do use that here. And then click here and then press OK. And then the answer is that. If you can see, again, uh, column one and column two, where in male and female, you have there are 171 female and 176 male. If you could add that, that's 354. So as you can see, the answers for the answers of female are is three point one zero, and the answers of male is three point eleven. So that is the average answers. And as you can see from this one, uh, uh, f critical is greater than f value. So therefore, we have to accept again. We have to accept our hypothesis that there is no significant difference between. Uh, in the developmental changes encountered by students when group according to sex. As we proceed for the grade level, so we have in Philippines, we have uh, in junior high school, we have four grade levels. We have grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, grade 10. So as you can see here, there are 91 grade seven, 91 grade eight, 92 grade nine, and 80 grade 10 students. So you have 354 to add that, 354. And the average answers, again, 
3.07, 3.09, 3.11, 300, 3.15 respectively. And the answer, again, for this one, try to find F, that is 1.104, and then critical F, that is 2.630, wherein if we uh, try to analyze, F critical is greater than, so 1.04, again, that is we have to accept. So the F is lesser than the F critical, we have to accept. So again, so there is a significant, there, there, there is no, there is no significant difference in, in the developmental changes encountered by the students when grouped according to grade level. So another one for monthly income. So, so this one, so you have, for this one, you have 2.271 and 2.398. As you can see again, so the F critical is less than, uh, sorry, greater than the F value. So therefore, we have to accept again. Accept then, there, therefore, there is, there is no significant difference between the developmental changes encountered by the students when grouped according to monthly family income. So again, so just a review, a quick review. So for example, we have to erase this one. So to find again the if there is there is a significant if there is a significant difference when group according to monthly income. So again, try data and then data analysis. I try find the ANOVA single factor and then click OK and then <coughs> select select the values from here and then drag until the last data. Okay, and then again, the output range where we're gonna put the answers. So here, and then press, okay. So again, <coughs> sorry. So that is the answer. So as you can see here, uh, again, F critical is greater than the F value. So therefore, we have to accept our hypothesis wherein there is no significant difference when group according to monthly in family income. So let's go with the two-way two -way ANOVA. So two-factor or two-way ANOVA. So two-way ANOVA is like a one-way ANOVA, a hypothesis-based test. So however, in the two-way ANOVA, each sample is defined in two ways <clears throat> and resultingly put into two categorical groups. So that's it. That's it. So we ha I have the two-way ANOVA here. As you can see in this table, so let's try. I have the data, so there are too many data here, as you can see. So how to find the answer for ANOVA? Again, I'll use the the second one. So example, you have the data, data analysis here, and then two factor with, with duplication. Okay, and with press OK, and then input range. Let's try to find this one. So I will use from here, the green one, and then here, this one. And then rows for sample, output range, okay. Then find this one and then okay. Uh, okay. It's a problem. Okay, there it is. Let's try the without replication. Okay, so that is the answer. So as you can see there, you have one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So that, that is the answer. So, so you have almost the same answer. So 1.6, 1.2.02. So for this one, uh, this is the answer for 
For example, maintaining balance, you have the physical and recognition. That is the problem. So you have uh, the replication and without the replication. So this one, ANOVA with the replication, and this one is ANOVA without the replication. So, so next, so we have the correlation. So the, what is the correlation? So we have the two points of correlation. We have the person R and we have the experiment draw. We will use the person R if we are not using the ranking, but if we use per, per, uh, experiment draw, if we, we are using ranking. So what is ranking? Example, uh, rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And if we in correlation, we'll just use example for grades. We have 80, 88, 80, 80, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. Those are the, the data for the person R. Okay. So we'll try to use this. We have the correlation. So, so we have the different um, interpretation for the correlation. That is, if... if from 9.1 to 1.0, very high positive. 7.7 7 to 0.9, that is high positive. 0.5 to 0.7, moderate positive. 0.3 to 0.5, low positive. 0 0.0 to 0.3, negligible. So, so let's try the, to, to answer this one. Okay. So, in, um, actually, in without using the without using data analysis, if uh, we can use the formula. So we can use score correlation. So type here, correl. So you can find the correl here. Okay, then RA1, for example, parents involvement. So the problem here are parents involvement, or is parent involvement um, related to the grades of the students. So drag this one and then RA2. Uh, drag this one from 1 to 30 and then pass enter. Um, to me, sorry. Uh, C, uh, C31. Oh, wait. Okay, so from this one, from letter B to B31, and then comma. So another RA. So you have this. And then enter. So answer 0 0.098. As you can see, there is a negative. So if you have that negative sign, so therefore, and since negative correlation, so we're in, uh, we have to find the interpretation. Like for example, you have 30. So I'll try to use internet. So we have interpretation. Interpretation, sorry. Um, critical value for critical value for person R value for R. So image for this one, as you can see here. So DF, you have. Uh, so if you have thirty, that is. 0 0.05 will use 0 0.05. So we always use 0 0.05. So 0 0.1 is 90% and 95, uh, 0.05 is 95% of, what uh, do uh, you call this? Uh, oh, I forget the word. <laughs> so that is, um, again, 0 0.05 level of significance and 0 0.1 level of significance. So we'll use again 0 0.1. Again, uh, sorry, 95% confidence, sorry. 95% confidence and 90% confidence is the right uh, word for that. So we'll use 30.349. So for this one, for this example, so the correlations, uh, again, 0 0.349. So 0 0.349, 0 0.349. As you can see, 0 0.349 is... Um, Again, it's greater than that, uh, greater than the F value of, uh, sorry, the R value. So therefore, we have to, again, we have to accept 
we're in, there is no significant relationship between parents' involvement to Greece. As you can see in this data, if we could analyze this one, even if you have a two or what you call two almost uh, low involvement of parents, the students have 97 and 3.52. There are this, there, this is very high parents' involvement and the degree of student is 90. So this is, um, for the analysis, the, our answer is correct. So that is, there is no significant different, uh, sorry, significant relationship between uh, parents' involvement in grades. It means uh, uh, it's either if parents' have, um, parents' involvement is not related to grades, whether uh, a parents involved in the academic performance of the students or the activities of the students, uh, the grade is not um, dependent to, again, parent involvement. So that is the person R. So that is the correlation. So again, correlation, this is the interpretation. So 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.7 to 0 0.9, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7, and 3. That is the end of my presentation. Okay. So thank you for listening. So if you have questions, if you have comments or, uh, again, question for me, you can um, message me through Messenger or just comment in the, section, in the comment section of this uh, live session. Okay, so that's all. So I have, we only have six minutes for this one. So thank you for listening. Hello. Oh, where are the moderator? Where are the moderator? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, no. <clears throat> can, we, it, uh, uh, can, can, can we show the Q&A or later on? It's, uh, it's time for quiz competition. Okay, sir. So I will I will share my cohort cohort, sorry. Yeah. So cohort yeah, this one. So this one. So I'll so this is the cohort. So use classic. So if you don't have cohort, uh download the cohort app in Play Store. So get ready to join. So you have the game pin. Just enter the game pin and then that's it. It's uh, not required to uh, download. You can play in directly. So uh, don't worry about that. Anyone can play through directly from Google. So this is the code yes. uh, which required for joining. So let's wait for five yes. minutes to join. Yes. Dear participants, it's time for quiz competition. So join now with the given code at code. Oh, there is one. Mm -hmm. One participant. You have two. We have Meg, A, Yokohama. Lots of, lots of, hopefully uh, more than two or three, more than 200. Okay. They need some time, actually. Yes, wait for them. We will wait three minutes more. Yes.
no need to download the apps you can di join directly from google with that code someone already trying to download the apps near about 100 after we 2 have minutes we will yes. yeah it's 92 3 5 6 one left. Ninety-six. Ninety-nine. Oh, we have one hundred. One hundred one. One minute left. So let's start, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. start. Yeah. So here we have 100, uh, 109 participants. So let's start. We only have three now, 23 uh, participants. So we have next. Okay, question number two. So what is the interpretation of the Quran box alpha is equal to 0 0.75? So answer is acceptable. So 30, 30 participants. The next. What is the interpretation if the current box alpha is equal to 0 0.68? So answer, questionable. Next, okay, scoreboard already leading. Next, question number four. What type of t-test is to be used if you have the data of p-test and post-test of one section? So Ari is leading, so 19.05, next, you have, what type of t-test to be used if you have the data of the scores of controlled and experimental group? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Next, area is leading. So next, using the result below, the intervention material have a significant effect in the performance of the students. So as you can see, it's negative zero six point seven zero sixty eight, and two points. Oh, sorry, have a significant effect. 
So we have one digit one by six nine nine. Sorry, it's true. So DD ever next. Question number seven. Using the result below, so the experimental group where outperform the control group. True or false? Next, Eberle is leading. So next, 8 out of 10. To compare the variance in the group means within a sample with only one independent variable, obvious one-way ANOVA. Is it true or false? Two. Scoreboard SDF is leading. Next, nine out of ten to our false. There is sign significant relationship between parental involvement and academic performance. Answer is false. There is no. So last question. So there is a very high positive significant correlation if the R value is 0 0.998 and the critical value is 0 0.286. I sorry. Sorry, that is so the winner is okay, so the winner is Sir Percy, second Z and SDF. Runner up gems V and Jump. So thank you for uh doing this kahot about data analysis and Chromebox Alpha. Yes, thank you so much, dear participants. It's a request that uh, those three, first, second, third, please contact our page inbox uh, with your original full name. Then we can issue a quiz completion certificate for you. So congratulations, both three, not only both three, congratulations to 107, all of participants. They have tried, actually. What do you think, sir? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right, that's right. But uh, actually, luckily, those three are winner. But uh, I think all are tried that all our participants are winner. Someday they also yeah. uh, can earn sorry, a quiz completion certificate or some more more than certificate. Yes. Yeah. Back to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for sharing your interact. Thank you for sharing your interactive knowledge on statistics. It is very really helpful for our audience, and we are really enjoyed the quiz also. Uh, thank you, sir. Today we learn a lot from both of the speaker on research and statistics. Uh, I think you all are the benefited by this session. Because teachers and aesthetics are related to our education and professional field. So, thanks to all both of the speakers. Uh, dear learner, I think this webinar will be helpful to your education and professional life. 
I would love to thank you all for my deep heart for attending today's sessions. Please write, leave a review or recommend on our page if you learned something from our uh, from us from IJP. And we hope to see you all again in next webinar. Stay safe and stay happy.